Welcome to the Fantasy Football Fiend Podcast with your hosts Zay, Young Vander, and Bro Joe. Welcome back to the best fantasy football podcast on the air, the Fantasy Football Fiend Podcast presented to you by Manscaped. I'm your host Zay, the Fantasy Football Fiend himself. Got my bros with me, the Fantasy Fiend. I'm Young Vander. Holler at the people. Fantasy Fiends, what's going on out there? And my guy, bro, Joe, back with us this week. Holla at the people, bro. I know they missed you. What's going on, Fantasy Fiend family? Let's get it. Yo, week eight is upon us. More injuries, a few confusing situations, waiver pickups. But we're going to get you through it all. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel at Fantasy Football Fiend, F-E-I-N. We have a great show in store for you today. News and notes, rapid fire 10, and we are going to get you ready for this week's matchups. Let's go ahead and get the party started with your news. And now your fantasy news. So we're going to start out with our quarterbacks. Um, there are a few that are injured, a few that are coming back from injury, a few guys that we might have to start this week, but we just don't quite know yet. Um, but let's kick it off with Brock Purdy. It seems as if he have made that, that he may have had a concussion this past week, and Sam Darnold may be in line if he can't get through that protocol um, before weeks in. And with it being Wednesday already, normally if you're still in that protocol, it, it might kind of be you know, you know, little helter skelter situation there of whether or not he's going to be ready. So. I guess the first question is, do we feel like Sam Darnold is actually going to be ready to rock? And could this be a situation where the seventh round pick that made the offense look good based on what the offense is may not necessarily be the best quarterback for the team when they see what the the blue blood, if you will, um, that was a first round pick gets in there and does with the team or is this just going to be a one-week go at it? What you got on your squad, man? This will definitely be just a, a one-week thing. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, Rock Purdy was undefeated going into this season as a you know regular season quarterback. Um, the last two games could have very, very easily been won. Uh, one was a missed field goal. And then and last week, as you can gotcha. see, if you look at his stats, he got the concussion during the game. Um, had a high quarterback rating, no turnovers, one touchdown pass before the concussion concussion but there's been a clip to where they thought the concussion happened after that two for six two interceptions you know what i'm saying so gotcha. um okay. not, so but i think don't be a, a really good one week play uh streaming play dfs play 6100 on fan uh so i do like him this week kyla murray got in a full practice I guess my thought on Kyler Murray is, is this just a a gearing up or are the Cardinals actually going to run him out there? Um, do you think they're going to take the full 21-day window um, or do you think he ends up back on Pup? What, what we got on Kyler Murray, Joe? I think we'll probably see him play probably as early as next week, maybe the week after. Um, he's well-versed in this offense. Since April, he's been, you know, Watch it behind the scenes, taking part of every meeting. He hasn't missed a meeting. Um, just like all the reports said, he was looking good a while ago. I think they're really just trying to – they wanted to bring him along and make sure he's 100%, like in every sense of the fashion, not just where we see a RG3, uh, all right, or, you know, these other quarterbacks that go through this injury, or any player for that matter. Um, so I think he's uh, 100% to go, but I think they're going to literally probably give him two weeks. I'm excited. I'm, I'm. I have. I have stake in him, so I need him to to play soon. Shit. We got Deshaun Watson, who I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Um, he came back last week. Ended up getting. Um, no, came back a couple weeks ago after being out for a couple weeks, and he he's just not. He. I, I don't. I don't know what's going on. Is it? Is he really injured? Is he not? vested is he i mean is, is it a, i got my 230 million regardless of what y'all say at this point so if i got a hangnail i ain't doing it like like what's going on with watson man uh, he's not healthy um i watched the game his his arm it just didn't have any any spin at all on the ball 
Uh, so I don't think he's fully healthy yet. I would say it's probably going to be another couple weeks before you see him get back out there. Um, I think they kind of rushed it a little bit. Uh, P.J. Walker, uh, they're 2 and with him. He hasn't really been fantasy good. Uh, I was looking for him to maybe get another quarterback in there, but they look like they're going to roll with P.J. Walker this week. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're winning because of P.J. Walker, but they have one with him. So, you know, I guess you keep the ball rolling. Uh, another team that uh, is rolling with the backup quarterback that may or may not do it this week, but I think they should. Uh, it's looking like Tyrod Taylor may actually be the better quarterback for the Giants, um, at least at this juncture in time. Uh, whether or not Daniel Jones will be ready to go this week or not, don't know. It seemed like based on his questionable tag up until the very end of last week that he was going to go last week. So was that a little bit more of the coach saying, hey, my job may be on the line and you don't seem to be it. So I'm going to have to blame it on injury and let the, the the more veteran guy go. Or do we think Daniel Jones is back this week, Joe? Yeah, from what it looked like, right, it's, it's likely that he might be back. But to your point, I mean, I'd rather ride the wave. This neck is so egregious. To let, let him sit out another few weeks because you're seeing an offense that's looking a lot better without him on the field, to your point. Um, it goes back to what we said before, where they gave him this contract with two years after that voidable for a certain reason, you know, like because he, he's just not really looking that great this year in Dabble's offense. But I think he should be ready to go. I, if I was a GM, I would just sit him another week, my person. But I think he's going to play this week for sure. Going on over to the running backs, we have Bijan Robinson, who uh, Vegas was a little bit upset with this week. I w- we'll get a little bit more into the uh, <laughs> the Vegas side of things when we get into the matchups. But I have a very uh, interesting and, and telling a uh, little bit of information for you guys to kind of go off of, you know, do with what you will. But it seems as if he had some sort of illness this past week, which is why he didn't get his first carry until sometime in the fourth quarter, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I don't think that that's anything that should linger um, per se. But um, I mean, is Robinson what you thought he would be based on all the hype in the off season or is it a bit of a letdown so far? Um, I know it's kind of a difference depending on which league type you have. Um, Cause he definitely hadn't, you know, been in the end zone too much if you're in a standard league, but he has been catching a few, you know, passes out of the backfield if you're in the PPR league. So how do you feel about Robinson so far, man? I mean, to be honest with you, man, Arthur Smith, the handcuffs is on this dude. Um, week to week, he's coming in saying the same thing. We're going to go with the hot hand. What? We talking about you got a 32 year old wide receiver playing running back. You got a guy that's not doing as well as he did last year. He had a thousand last year, but if you really bought into him, you wouldn't have drafted a running back this high. And then you True. this guy who's the most talented guy in the room, and you're not giving him the opportunity to succeed. I mean, it's Arthur Smith is like we already know he's not a fan of fantasy football. Every time he gets the chance to, he'll say a little, you know, sly statement. But um He's really handcuffing this guy from really excelling and being that guy that we thought he was going to be. You see the ability there. I mean, there's clips. There's different runs. He is, is there. But, again, this is the same dude that still got really playing quarterback. And it's the same guy who wouldn't throw pitch the ball last year. So, um, hey, you get what you get, I guess. Yeah, touche, touche. We got uh, Raheem Mostart, who is starting his uh, yearly uh, injury issues, uh, bothered by ankle injury right now, so he did miss practice on Wednesday. That could kind of be par for the course for most veterans as far as Wednesday questionable or, or missing Wednesday practices, but um, with A-Chain's window opening up, I, I want to say next week not sure if it's just going to be the four weeks or if it'll be a little bit longer than that but i think he hits four weeks uh next week if i'm not mistaken as far as i've uh, been on ir are, are we kind of looking at jeff wilson or savan ahmed as far as this week is concerned or is this just par for the course for a veteran and start raheem Mostart until a chain is back or even when he gets back what you got on that one joe 
you just said it with the last statement, right? You're gonna start most start. You're gonna run him into the ground until a chain get back. For real, I don't. I don't trust anybody other than Raheem Mostert. I don't think the offense will look. I don't know what it will look like without somebody like his skill set. Um, yeah, I, I'm honestly waiting for a chain to get back. We got Zach Moss who is dealing with the elbow and a heel issue. He missed practice on Wednesday. So um, this past week, Moss and Jonathan Taylor each had 35 snaps. Uh, Taylor had, I want to say, 21 carries, and Moss had like 18 carries somewhere around that neck of the woods. Um, so it looks like Taylor is slowly kind of regaining footing as far as the offense is concerned. But how confident are we in Moss going forward? Or is it, do we feel like it's going to continue to be a tandem or he's going to kind of be waned back to the point where he's only getting maybe 10 carries and the the rest of the carries are kind of been added to JT's, uh, you know, to, to his uh, carry count. What, what you got on that indie situation, man? I mean, let's see. I mean, because it's hard for you to say Jonathan Taylor is now taking the lead. I mean, 18 carries is a lot of carries. It's a lot of work. It is. You know Definitely. what I'm saying? So um, this could be very well a split. It seems like Zach Moss has earned, you know, the touches they're getting now. You know, and Jonathan Taylor, he was playing well. So maybe the coaches want to still keep him involved. Um, So I think this week, the next week, it'll be telling to see how that split is. Um, but these guys continue to get 15 plus touches. I mean, well, carries, not even touches, carries. I mean, he still has some some dog in the fight. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wouldn't risk either to injury, knowing how easy it is for a running back to get nicked up. Um, it, it would make sense, especially without now having a running quarterback to kind of attempt to keep both of them fresh and also attempt to keep the quarterback that you have from being the reason that you lose games. Um, so you got two studs at running back, use them. We got Saquon Barkley, who's beginning the week limited with an elbow issue. He's also the talk of some uh, trade deadline um, rumors, if you will. Uh, Halloween is actually the trade deadline this year. And I've been hearing a lot about Barkley to Bart Baltimore has been a perfect fit, but whether or not it's actually going to happen, we don't know. The Giants have been vocal in saying that they don't foresee themselves trading Barkley, but we hear teams every year say that they don't see it until they see it. So who knows how that's going to work out, but what's your outlook on Barkley going forward, Joe? I think he stays with the team. Um, but again, this is the NFL. I can say that today and then – Next week, they didn't ship him off for a second-round pick. I think if we were to look at trading them, the collateral would have to start somewhere between a second and first-round pick. Um, but I just think because of how everything was structured and set up, I think he plays I think he plays the rest of the year. I think, you know, as far as what it looked like publicly, like, you know, as far as, you know, his whole sit-out, then you finally give him some money. But the way I gave him money to trade him, we already know how the New York media is in particular. It will be a shit show if they traded him unless – Again, we talking about first round picks. I mean, I think that'd be the only thing that would kind of quell everybody is if they knew they can go into the draft uh, and get somebody that's formidable. And it, it is going to be talent this year. I can say that. I mean, if you give me Saquon, your second and third, I might entertain giving up a first. But an older running back that's often injured, you got to give me something else with that running back if I'm giving up a first. Like that's a lot for an older running back, but. I don't. I, I don't know that 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 would be that would be an interesting scenario. But I do think he would fit in perfectly uh, with Baltimore. There's several other teams that may be looking that I don't think he would be as good of a fit for. But um, they were also talking about uh, rumors of Derrick Henry going to the Cowboys, which I think that that would be a ridiculous fit. Um, he's basically a bigger, stronger version of what they lost in Zeke. Um. I don't know that his past pro is on the same level, but it's definitely not bad. And um, Tony Pollard hasn't taken the step that I thought he would with Zeke being gone. I mean, being the main guy, uh, I, I don't know if maybe, you know, a one, a one B role may actually be better for Pollard may actually give him a little bit more pop. Um, if that makes sense, but 
What kind I of just, see how that goes. I actually just got an alert saying uh the Ravens have officially inquired about uh Derrick Henry. So look for oh. that. Um see, now I don't think that he works well with Baltimore. I think that Barkley would be because what I'm looking at is that um you know how Lamar Jackson loves to do that uh, kind of like that option, if you will, like between him and Barkley, just having that, that, that quick first step, if you will, kind of holding it in the belly for a second there and then kind of reading the defense. I, I think that that would be a ridiculous setup, but Henry would definitely be better than, you know, what they currently have set up in um, Baltimore. So kind of have to see how that would go, but it, it, Henry wouldn't be a bad move. He'd definitely be better than what they got right now, and, and I think they're trying to move him relatively cheap. I heard that they were also trying to move uh, DeAndre Hopkins as well, so you know, it's that time of the year where you're going to see a few things that are kind of eye-popping, but um, we'll kind of have to see how that works out. Uh, a few running backs to uh, Go ahead and end out this part of the news. We got Keaton Mitchell from Baltimore. Uh, no practice due to hamstring. Uh, Aaron Jones, no practice due to hamstring. Miles Sanders was able to log in a full practice. Uh, coming back from a shoulder injury, it said that he and Cuba Hubbard might be in a, a running back by committee type of a situation. Uh, Hubbard's kind of earned his, you know, carries, if you will. Rashawn Johnson out there in Chicago, um, he was recovering from a concussion. He had a full practice, so all signs point to him being able to go this week. Now, my question is, with the Chicago situation, do we see Foreman kind of being able to wag his finger in the coach's face and say, you might not like me, but I'm the best you got based on what I've been able to produce? Or does Rashawn Johnson get right back in there and kind of get his normal share of carries and they kind of still a running back by committee sort of a situation. What what we got going on in Chicago? Oh, uh, it's been a committee the whole time, right? Foreman just wasn't a part of it. Right. So now, exactly. So now, <laughs> yeah, so now that Herbert is out, it's just a committee with those two guys. I think Rashawn, he probably get the first crack at it, but it looks like Foreman has earned a role. I mean, the guy just come up with a three touchdown game, right? Uh, so I think he has earned a role. Yeah. He, he was bought in anyway as a free agent. Uh, initially, people thought he was going to be the starter when it first all started. It's, look, it's looking like he should have been, but yeah, so I think uh, I think he and the coach had some beef or something going on. Yeah, so I, th I think it'd be a committee for sure. Moving on over to wide receiver, uh, Juju Smith Schuster is not on the injury report, so he may be ready to go for New England this week. Um, we got Justin Watson who logged a full practice for Kansas City. He had an elbow issue going on. Uh, Joshua Palmer missed practice with a knee injury. Not exactly sure what the timetable is for that. Um, it doesn't look like he's going to miss, but, you know, that, that could be a, a game time type of situation. The two wide receivers that um, I want to kind of focus on, if you will, both Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill are dealing with injuries. Jalen Waddle had a back injury. That kept him out for a little bit of the game on Sunday. Tyreek Hill's dealing with a hip injury. He went over to the sideline a little bit, was able to get back in the game, um, but he's held out of practice on Wednesday. Waddle was limited in practice on Wednesday. Normally, if you can get in a limited practice on a Wednesday, that means that they don't really have much of a concern as far as Sunday is concerned. But are you concerned as far as fantasy production? Um is concerned with either one of these guys. Well, it looks like Water will play for sure, right? Um, as far as Tyree goes, it's still up in the air. But these guys are playing the Patriots this week, which both team both guys were present the last time they played, and no one did anything anyway as much. Um, I like this Patriots defense going into this game as well. Anyway, I mean now they have JC Jackson back in the play. He's been playing pretty decent. Uh Jack Jones is now up and running. So the corners of the Patriots are, are rolling pretty good. Uh, so as far as a fantasy thing, I think you should temper expectations uh, for either one of these guys, whether they're going to play um, or not. You know, well, if they're not going to play, of course, but if they're going to play, I still will temper the expectations going into this game. But Tyreek is definitely a questionable guy. 
Got Chris Godwin with Tampa Bay, who is questionable for Thursday's game due to a neck injury. Normally, when you have that early, you know, early during the week type of a game, the, you know, questionable tags can be a little bit more worrisome uh, based on the fact that they don't have those extra few days to kind of get right. But do we think that Chris Godwin is a guy that we're going to be able to count on this Thursday? And then secondly, is Chris Godwin a guy that you attempt to go get on the cheap? Or do we think that his season might just be injury riddled and we won't see the, you know, fantasy Chris Godwin that we saw, you know, years past? Uh, I think he, I think he'll play this week. That's number one. Okay. But number two, uh, Chris Godwin for me is a buy low guy. Okay. Uh, so I definitely would buy on him, you know, low. Because who knows who the quarterback is going to be even when the season's in. I mean, Mayfield is questionable himself coming into this week, right? Yeah, he had a knee issue or right. something going but on. We don't know. So I, I definitely would buy along Chris Godwin. The Chris Godwin owner may be, you know, maybe a seller right now for who knows, uh, one of these hot guys right now. Could be a Joshua Downs, could be a Rasheed Rice, could be someone. But um, I definitely would buy along him right now. Tank Dale was able to get into full practice. So um, it looks like he's going to be able to go this week. So my question as far as Tank Dale and Houston is concerned is, do you feel like this is a Tank Dale week? Or is this more of a, you know, Dalton Schultz type of a week? Or are we going to see a little bit more um, out of Nico Collins, who has been kind of a surprise as far as the fantasy season is concerned so far? Um, who, who do we think kind of has the, the the better prognosis as far as this week is concerned down there in Houston? I honestly think this is a Devin Singletary week, honestly. But if I had to pick okay. a receiver, I'm gonna go with probably Nico Collins. The guy's been probably a little more consistent. Um, as far as with uh, Stroud, so mm -hmm. probably pick a guy. But Schultz has been coming on as of late, so I think they have getting more comfortable as the season has been coming on. So I do like him as well, but uh, Carolina is one of the worst teams in the league against the run. So maybe we'll see Pierce finally do something. It seems last week that Singletary has been creeping up as far as his usage. Um, so he can very well take over his backfield. And that pretty much wraps up the news. Uh, let's go ahead and get into Rapid Fire 10. All right, man, here we go, man. Rapid Fire 10, Rapid Fire 10. We got 10 quick questions. We need 10 quick answers. Who do I start? Let's get right into it. All right. We got Tyrod Taylor and your boy. You spoke of Sam Donald. I'm gonna go with uh, Tyrod. Is well, obviously that's if Daniel Jones don't start. I'm I'm gonna roll with Tyrod. Mm. Another quarterback question. We got Tyson Badgett or Desmond Riddler. Oh, give me Desmond Ritter for sure. Um, yeah, I think I'm. I think I would roll with Ritter too. We got Kareem Hunt. Or Javonta Williams? Actually, I'm going to go with Hunt on this one. Uh, Ford avoided IR, but he's going to be out of commission uh, for a couple of weeks with his injury. So I think I'm going to run with Kareem Hunt. I agree. Let's not forget also, guys, who's paying attention, uh, Pierre Strong. Um, he was a guy that actually, when he did show up, he got more carries than Kareem Hunt once he came into the game. Um, so that's something to watch as well. Mm -hmm. He did All a pretty right. good job. And New England let him go for nothing. But I digress. <laughs> All right. We got uh, Cuba Hubbard or A.J. Dillon? Jimmy Hubbard. Hubbard. A.J. Dillon is a huge disappointment, Joe. <laughs> Dude is a bus bus, man. Thanks, LaFleur. <laughs> we got D.J. Moore or George Pickens. 
I, I'm going to roll with Pickens because he has his starting quarterback. I don't necessarily trust Badgett that much. I actually, I'll go with uh, DJ Moore. I mean, even without um, Badgett, like, go back to the week before last, six tar- uh, seven targets, six receptions. It was an absurd number this week. He he knows how to give him the ball. I like uh, the matchup against the Chargers. I think it's a, a decent matchup for Badgett mm-hmm. to keep it going. Yeah, true, true, true. All right, we got Amari Cooper. Or Rasheed Rice. Oh, give me Rasheed. I like Rasheed. I'm going to stay in the flames with the young bull, Rasheed. We got Calvin Ridley or DeAndre Hopkins. Give me DeAndre. I'm tired of believing in Calvin. I'm over his shit, man. (laughs) But it's like, I don't even trust Hopkins like that. So it's like... Exactly. So I'm 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 a roll with Calvin Ridley. At least he's done it a couple times this season so far. Right. Hopkins has had one of those games yet. So I guess we're gonna see how they get in the how Will Levis Levis play. Um, True. Yeah. Because that's the reason why for the question. All right, we got Kyle Pitts or Taysom Hill. Hmm. I actually like Taysom Hill going up against the Colts. So I'm 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 a roll with because he's gonna be the quarterback, the tight end, the running back. Like he's gonna get some work. So give me give me the guy that's gonna get paid a little bit more attention to, if that makes sense. No, I agree a thousand percent. I think too, John has been playing a really heavy role in the Falcons uh passing offense. He's had several targets every game, literally. Arthur Smith is just horrible. They need to go ahead and get rid of him. You know, Ramonda is a revenge game for John New because they are playing Tennessee this week. Facts, yeah. And with that being said, John New Smith or Trey McBride? Mm. Mm, Zach Ertz did go to IR. Give me Trey. I think think I'm going to still go with Smith, though. Trey's nasty. Like like you just said, Joe, he's getting a lot more attention, so. Yeah, I think I just think Trey's uh ceiling going back to even last year. I was saying he's like Goddard, and that when he get the opportunity, he been putting up as the guy. And last but not least, flex question: Isaiah Pacheco or Puka Nakua? Pacheco, Puka, man, uh, was that's a that's a tough. One. I'm gonna still say Puka. I thought Cup was gonna really uh, tie in so much into that pass offense with the Rams and. Puka came out the first half getting most of those catches. Still had an impressive game. Um, I I think I, I think I'm gonna go with Puka. Um, in a PPR situation, in a standard situation, I'll go with Pacheco. Um, a little known fact: he actually had more targets than Cooper Cup did this week. So. We're used to Stafford kind of focusing on Cup, not so much anymore. He focusing on whoever happens to be open, and the number one corner is mm-hmm. on Cup. So, well, I told you he's playing the Robert Woods role, right? So, people yeah, was some, facts. Some, some people's mind they was thinking he's playing uh, Cup's role, and that's not the case. So, I mean, we seen how this offense looked when Robert Woods was there. You know, some yeah. weeks it'd be Woods, some weeks it'd be Cup. We didn't see Cup explode until Woods left for the most part. So. Yeah, true. So that concludes our Rapid Fire 10. Rapid Fire 10. So let's go right ahead and get into these matchups. One thing I do want to point out to you guys uh, from this past week. And I always say this, but I just want to illustrate it. So I always tell you to go against the public, right? This past week, um, for example, one second here, let me find it. Six games that the public was heavy one way that probably should have normally gone the other way, and it didn't. So Buffalo, minus seven and a half. Public, 83% on Buffalo. Patriots win the game. Bucks, minus two and a half. 79% of the public bet on the Bucks. Atlanta wins the game. Cleveland, minus three and a half. 78% of the public 
took the money. Cleveland wins by one point, meaning the public loss. Lions plus three. 78% of the public took the three. Lions got slaughtered. Raiders minus two and a half. 78% of the public took the Raiders. Raiders lost the game. 80% of the public on San Fran. What happens? Minnesota wins. So I'm not saying that there's any funny business going on. All I'm saying is look and see what the public consensus is if you're putting any shekels down. And if it's anywhere close to 80%, please bet with the house and not against it. That's my public service announcement for this week. All right, so let's go right ahead and get into the matchups. Thursday, we have the Buccaneers going up against the Bills. This is an eight-and-a-half-point spread, and Tampa Bay is getting the money. Uh, 43-point over under here. Um, I'll go ahead and kick us off with this one. Um, honestly, with the minus eight-and-a-half, I'm feeling like this might not be the best of games for Tampa Bay. However, Again, like I said, I'm going to wait and see what the public is doing because Buffalo has been beat up by whatever the public say they aren't going to do. So if it's a 50-50 split, Buffalo will probably end up winning this game and that offense will look like it normally looks. But regardless of the fact, we've seen Diggs do his thing. Allen is still going to get his points in there. So, you know, that's kind of is what it is. We've seen um, Evans do his thing. And a, and a part of this may be the fact that they don't know if Baker Mayfield is going to go with his uh, knee injury. And then if Godwin is still nicked up as well, that kind of puts them um, behind the power curve, if you will. So um, I am starting my studs as far as Buffalo is concerned. I don't have any fear of starting James Cook. Uh, if he's one of the guys that you're depending on. Tampa Bay does have a pretty good defensive line, though. Um, so, you know, if you have other options, pivot. But outside of that, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, Rams versus Cowboys. This is a 45-and-a-half point over under, and the Rams are getting six-and-a-half points. Vander, what you got on this matchup? Oh, man, I think this is going to be another matchup where we see – C.D. Lamb look kind of, you know, average. Uh, right. The Rams are coming in, one of the better teams against, surprisingly this year, one of the better teams against the wide receiver. Um, I'm kind of feeling uh, Daryl Henderson. You know, um, the Cowboys technically are pretty decent against the run, but I think it's one of those games where Daryl Henderson can get in position and score. Um, he's like, he's the, the best available uh, in the farm right now, you know, they're not messing with Evans. They're not messing with uh, Freeman as much. He seemed like the guy, uh, which we kind of predicted. Of course, nice. uh, Puka Cup, per usual. Um, just play just play your guys as far as that go, um, as far as the Rams. You know, those are two fantasy relevant, relevant guys. The two receivers in, in Henderson. On the other side, I do like uh, Pilot a lot this game. I think he kind of get back to the Pilot we were accustomed to seeing or used to seeing or who we thought we was going to see this year, I think this game is going to kick that off. We got the Vikings going up against the Packers. Divisional matchup and the spread kind of bears that out because it's only a one-point spread and the over-under is at 42. What you got on this matchup, Joe? I think it's going to be a heck of a game, but it's, it really comes down to what Kirk Cousins we're going to see. Um, my personal opinion. But either way, I think you got to really look at who he has on offense. You got to fire everybody up from Madison, uh, Addison, Madison, <laughs> and Hawkinson, uh, particularly. You got to go all three of those guys, especially um, uh, Addison in particular. I, I was, you know, been saying about him as far as a prospect. He he didn't need, you know, I can't say I didn't say, I, didn't, I can't say I said that he didn't need JJ, but as far as a man beater and what he could do as far as his route running ability. He can get it done by himself. He had that beautiful touchdown against cover uh, one uh, last week. was crazy. Took it to the house. I think you can expect it. Like, well, because he is getting – if, if Jay is going with him, let me – I got to calm down because I got to think about the inner van advantage came in my head. If Jay is following him, which well, you can't I, – I hope not. That's a tough matchup. But I still like it. I got to like the odds. You got to like somebody because KJ, you know, can't do it. Brandon Powell can't do it. So you got to go with your studs as far as the Vikings. As far as uh, Green Bay, 
it's like who Aaron Jones come back, hopefully, prayerfully. Aaron Jones give him a spark. Musgrave is banged still, up. Still got that hamstring thing going on. So, you know, fingers crossed. We'll, we'll right. know a little bit later in the week what's going to go on with him. <laughs> I think um, if there's one bright spot we got to point out is Christian Watson, right? I think that's one guy because Musgrave is on the men right now this week. Uh, I would look heavily into, you know, Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson for those that's out there. Minnesota is horrible against the pass. So I think it's going to be a good week for them. I also think in this game, okay. real quick, I also think in this game that uh, we may see more Cam Akers. Um, Madison is not looking like he's the guy in the backfield. And if you watch the last game, it seemed like, you know, I could see Akers maybe creeping, trying to take over this backfield. So look for that to, to happen as well. Let's see here with Cam and with Cam and Madison. How did that flesh out last week? Well, you got to look at the red zone touches and things of that nature. So those are things. Well, Acres had twelve carries. Madison had ten. To your point. Yeah. So now Madison was on the field a little bit more, but when it was time to run the ball, it was about the same. So yeah, great shout out. Uh, the Falcons going up against the Titans. This is a 35 and a half point over under. That got to be the lowest of the week. Um, but we're looking at a two and a half point spread. Tennessee is getting the money. Uh, on, on this one, honestly, the only person that I would be interested in starting, if I can help it, would probably be Henry. And that's with a grain of salt because um, all of his games this year haven't been, you know, what we're used to seeing of him. There's not really anybody that I trust on Atlanta's side of the ball. Um, I definitely don't want to have to start Will Levis. Um, maybe he comes out and he's a stud. But the fact that he was QB3 and didn't really show much in the offseason or preseason, that doesn't really bode very well. And the fact that Vegas is saying the over-under is at 35 and a half doesn't bode very well either. So that's kind of how I'm looking at this particular matchup. Uh we got the Texans going up against the Panthers. This is a 43 and a half point over under, and Carolina is getting three points. What we got on this matchup? Like I was saying earlier, man, I like the Houston backfield. Uh, Carolina has been getting slaughtered on the ground. Uh, maybe Pierce getting the end zone early. Uh, and like I said, Singletary has seemed like he's been getting more and more opportunity. Uh, I, I'm looking for him. Maybe, again, this could be one of those Cam Akers situations where he kind of takes over the backfield. Uh, Stroud probably will continue to play great as well. Um, Nico Collins, you know, this is the guys, Nico Schultz, Stroud, the Houston backfield. On the other side, oh, man, Adam Thielen, you got to ride the wave, right? I mean, he's the target hog. He's been um, making it shake. So on that side, they get hurt. <laughs> yeah, so on that side, I would say him and Young, if you're in a deep league, um, or probably the only guys I like fantasy relevant wise. Um, that's that backfield is already sloppy, and now you're splitting up more slop. Um, so I'm not really a fan of Sanders or Hubbard going into this game against this uh, Houston run defense. Got the Saints going up against the Colts. This is a 43 and a half point over under, and there is no spread on this game currently, which is kind of interesting. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that's about, um, unless there's a a potential injury to a significant player. Um, that's normally the only time that there isn't a spread on the game. But what we got on this matchup, Joe? It's going to be pretty interesting this week. Uh, I want to know a little bit more about Kamara. I think he'll probably go, but just going to be following that this week. But I think there's going to be a really competitive matchup if, if somebody's going to be spectating and just watching as a fan. Uh, other than that, man, I just think it's, as far as the wide receiver position, you start everybody as usual with the Saints. I wish I would. I would love to see Alave get the ball a lot more in this offense. I mean, they've been, he's been able to spread it around to a bevy of targets. Uh, if I had to point out one person that just recently came back, Moreau has really been featured as the tight end due to Juwan being hurt. We already know we mix up Taysom Hill into that uh, equation, so obviously that makes him a start as well. But Moreau got the look, and I think he scored the touchdown, one of the touchdowns nah, last he should have scored a touchdown. He should have, yeah. Ball. Oh, <laughs> I had to go off screen. That's how mad I got. Easy touch down. That but mother- yeah, he dropped the ball. But yeah, but, I feel thing, you on that though. One thing we didn't mention in news, man. In this game, you may see Olave go 70 miles an hour down the field. Um, so that's something also 
Oh, he might see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ain't got no. I mean, ain't, ain't not really much of a corner on the indie side of things. So, but not only that, but your um, the young boy um, what's the boy Rashid? I think it's yeah, his name? Shahid. Yeah, Shahid. Um, he's another one of those take the top off the defense may make your fantasy week in one catch. So. If you're trying to, you know, fill out the tail end of a DFS roster, he might be somebody that I throw in there just with the hope and a prayer. Um, if you were top heavy somewhere else, um, the Patriots and the Dolphins are meeting up. This is a 46 and a half point over under. I uh, wanted the higher for the week. The uh, Patriots are getting eight and a half points. And, um, yeah, this is going to be another one of those games. Just go against the public. Like, forget what you think you know about football. Just this is anytime you're over seven points, just just go go against the public. But at any rate, as far as fantasy is concerned, uh, Vander alluded to it a little bit earlier. A lot of times, this New England and Miami matchup is is a uh, you know. <laughs> It, it can be a little bit of one of those divisional matchups that no one really does as much as they would normally do against others, which is saying a lot for New England, who doesn't normally do much in general um, outside of last week going up against the Bills. I can kind of see, obviously, you got to start your studs as long as they're able to go, but I can kind of see this game not being as fantasy relevant or you not really getting the same points that you thought you might be able to get from a Miami side of the ball. If you're depending on new England players, God bless you. Um, but yeah, I, I, temper your expectations on the Miami side of the ball all the way down to the running back. Um, I, I could just see this being one of those knockdown drag outs. One team wins, you know, 17 to 14 kind of a, you know, ugly game um that's kind of where i am on that matchup but we got the jets and the giants this is a 36 and a half point over under the giants are getting three and a half points in this matchup what we got here do we like anybody in this matchup actually i love Brees hall this game uh i think this i think this is going to be a coming up party for him um you already seen him over the last couple weeks he's getting more and more comfortable so he's getting more and more healthy. Um, I guess his giant defense, I think, they are, you know, susceptible to the run. Um, so I do love Brees Hall. DFS play just in general uh, this game on the Jets side of things. I still, I can't, Garrett Wilson, I guess he's like a wide receiver three play, you know, at this point, because uh, you just never know what Zach Wilson you're going to get. Um, so on that, on that side of the ball, that's the only person I like. On the other side of the ball, it's just Saquon or die. It's nothing really else. Um, they're going against the Jets. The secondary is pretty superior, and you're playing yeah. against. If it is Tyrod or even if it's Daniel Jones. Um, so out of this game, there's only two players I like, and those are the two running backs. No one else. Jaguars going up against the Steelers. This is a 42-point over-under, and Pittsburgh is getting two-and-a-half points. What say you, bro, Joe? Man, I think this is going to be a really good game for the wide receivers of the Steelers. I, I'm not going to say much about the quarterback or running back position other than hopefully Warren. Hopefully Warren can get going and, and uh, have a lot of production. But on the other end, Jacksonville, yet again, Evan Ingram, obviously, Kirk Cousins, Cousins, not Kirk Cousins, Christian Kirk. Crazy. Last couple games, man, all this production coming out from him, which is leading me to question Calvin Ridley. We always got to give him a – uh, you know, dart throw, but I mean, Christian Kirk, I, I gotta say, I like him a lot. Etienne is another person. We see him get over 15 carries a majority of the season. I don't think he only fell short one game uh, under those 15 carries. But other than that, he's getting more double digit touchdowns, what, two of the last three weeks? I, I want to say the last three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. It might be the last three weeks. I think, he's, he's, number, I think he's the number three running back in fantasy right now, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Even if it's Pittsburgh, just because how how versatile he is, he can catch one and take it to the house. Right. I can't. I don't think they can keep him down for four quarters. My personal opinion. Got the Eagles going up against the Commanders. This is a forty three and a half point over under, and Washington is getting six and a half points. Start your uh, start everybody that you normally would start on Philly um, from the running back Swift. 
um, to AJ, to even I think this can be a good game for Devonta uh, Smith as well. It's far. Uh, oh, and the Philly defense as well. Um, they just do. Do we think that the uh, the safety that they just traded for is going to end up playing this week, or or do we think he'll sit out a week? No, he should play. So, no, so I, I like their defense even better then. Yeah, um, I think he's play and just and and like you said with the defense. I mean Washington, Sam Howell was coming in with the most sack quarterback I think we got right now. Yeah, I think pretty he's much. Something like forty seven sacks or something crazy. Um, and then you're playing against this line. It's just a recipe. Healthy. All of them healthy, too, on top of that. But let's not forget as well, A.J. Brown had that real explosion this year against this same team. Yeah. So look for him to continue. The, he's the number one fantasy receiver, I believe. So look for him to continue that, too. Um, On the Washington side of things, I don't, I don't really like anybody. Um, like... Like, like their their best player on offense is Brian Robinson and Scary Terry, and I don't like either one of them going up against this team. Um, Scary yeah. Terry hasn't really done much this year in general, and he I feel like he's their best wide receiver. So, um, that's kind of where I'm at on this matchup. We got the Browns versus the Seahawks. This is a 38 point over under, and the Browns are getting three and a half points. That probably has a lot to do with PJ Walker. Um, being under center yet again. Uh, how do we think the Browns' defense ends up matching up against Seattle, and do we think that they can do anything on offense? What we got on this matchup? I think it's going to be an ugly game. Uh, play your kickers in this game. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, that Browns' defense has been, you know, playing very well. Miles Garrett, I know he got drug tested uh, Monday, <laughs> you know, after the performance he had Sunday. Uh, so, and, you know, again, like you say, P.J. Walker's offense hasn't been able to really move a lot. Um, but, again, you have to play a guy like Kareem Hunt, who will probably be bolstered uh, with forward out. He's kind of the man now. Um, you know, he's a three-down style running back. So, I guess you have to play him against this Seattle defense. But uh, on the on the Seattle side, kind of temper with everybody. Geno hasn't really been himself this year. It's kind of looking like the Geno of old. Uh, Walker has been playing well. It's looking like he's back to himself more so than not being himself because last year was the anomaly. Yeah, the, the clock strike 12. You know what I mean? Um, Walker's been playing pretty good this season, but again, this defense, I think, is going to be a real ugly game, a real field position game. Um, they're going those type of games. So you got the Ravens going up against the Cardinals. This is a 44 and a half point over under, and the Ravens are getting eight and a half points what you got on this one joe man i think the ravens are finally finding continuity in this offense i think this is gonna be another building block game i don't care if buddha's coming back they just don't have as many pieces to contend with lamar we've seen him now being able to not just get a grasp of the offense but be his old self as far as being a runner as far as the running back i think it's just it's just too many too many miles in that all uh, the backfield Obviously, you know, you favor both Justice Hill and Edwards, but you got to flip a coin with those. And then at the wide receiver position, it's only two guys. It's Zay Flowers and it's going to be Mark Andrews. Aguilar going to sprinkle for a big catch. Odell going to get two and Bateman might get one. I mean, we don't trust, you know, anybody outside of Zay and Mark Andrews. Then on the other side of it, I mean, without Connors, this offense has just went back and deflated itself. Um, I don't like anybody on that offense. If I had to pick one person, it is somebody that we spoke about earlier, and it's Trey McBride. Again, games without Ertz, he's done a phenomenal job in this offense, and I think he's going to have a fair opportunity. He is out in Hollywood, and just how we just said Zay and uh, Andrews, it's going to be the same set between Hollywood and this young man. And I think he's going to be a great play for DFS, a great play to start in general. Um, I think he'll have a, a nice coming out this week. Well, this is this is so this is a revenge game for Hollywood too. Yeah, facts. Hmm. No, normally those storylines end up playing a role in scoring too. You know, go figure. But, well, he's, um, he's definitely one of the leaders in air yards at wide receiver. He's getting targets, but it's not really getting much production out of it. Um, the, the targets are there, but the catches are not are not there. He might be another uh, buy low target as well with Kyler Murray possibly coming out in the next couple of weeks. So we'll, we'll kind of see how that 
you know, works out. Um, if you were going to try to go for the gusto, if you will, with a, a receiver that you can maybe get a little bit lower, um, but get major production um, with the quarterback change, that might be a guy to keep your eye on. Um, you got the Bengals going up against the 49ers. This is a 43 and a half point uh, over under. And Cincinnati's getting three and a half points. I honestly feel like this is a trap game for the public. Because I think based on the last two weeks, people are going to kind of switch it up on San Fran and kind of go towards Cincinnati. And San, the San Fran that we were used to for the first month of the season is going to be the San Fran that shows up this week, meaning that their defense is going to kind of stymie that uh, Cincinnati offense. Um, I think Chase will still have the game that he needs to have um, they'll probably put up a couple touchdowns, uh, but I can see this being like a you know, 20 to 28 sort of a, a game with it going uh, San Fran's way. Um, if you got Christian McCaffrey, I shouldn't have to tell you to start him. Uh, we don't know if Debo is going to be back, but um, if he isn't back, then that makes me more confident in Ayuk and Kittle. Um, but if you have either one of those guys, they're kind of in a must-start position. Um, but, you know, start your studs and keep your fingers crossed is how I'm looking at this particular matchup. Um, Chiefs versus Broncos. This is a 46-point over-under, and Denver is getting seven points. That's actually kind of low in my opinion because I um, I don't know. Um, but what we got on this side, uh, Denver versus Kansas City matchup, 46-point over-under. Seven point spread. Man, you know who to play. Like <laughs> these guys just uh played each other. Um, um it's definitely Mahomes, of course, Kelsey. And the only guy that I like, uh, and Pacheco, he's played well. I mean, the Broncos defense is horrible. Uh, like I said, Rasheed Rice, his route participation has been going up over the last couple of weeks. The targets have been going up and the production yeah, number one wide receiver. Yeah, pretty much. He's pretty much the most consistent guy they got. Uh, I like him better than anybody. Hardman, MVS, Tony, you know, more. So uh, those would be the guys on that side. Um, let's see how this defense looks with without um, one of the key pieces. Um, he's he's injured. I think he'll be out for eight weeks for the Chiefs, uh, linebacker. Um, and Javonta, it seems like he's been starting to amp up a little bit. So... I'm not saying they're going to be big plays, but don't be surprised if Russell comes out and to have a decent game this game. Um, and Bolton it, is a major piece of that defense that's out. Right, right. so him being out. So don't be surprised if, if um, Judy – who knows if these guys are going to be there. These are going to be some of these guys' last game as Broncos as this trade deadline approaches. Right. Uh, so Somebody about to be gone. We don't know who yet, but I don't see them not – trading anybody at the deadline that that's one of those teams that's looking to move somebody so we got the bears versus the Chargers. this is a 46 and a half point over under and chicago is getting eight and a half points what you got joe yeah i think this is a bounce back for the Chargers as far as playing all these skill position players you can pay top to bottom start everybody on the charges it's crazy how uh, Joshua Palmer, I think that might be one of the biggest ads or acquisitions anybody can make in Dynasty right now is getting Joshua Palmer. It doesn't matter. You know, we saw Lombardi. He was the X receiver. He was in place of Williams. He did exactly the same thing, you know, what we see in this year. Now in a new offense with Kellen Moore, no Mike Williams. He's doing exactly what Mike Williams is doing in this offense. It's just he's at this point. You know, you know, having the opposition, you know, opposite of, uh, you know, Keenan Allen, this guy's playing phenomenal. I think he's going to continue to play. He's playing this game. I uh, think, obviously, Keenan Allen can get really back to getting a 100-yard uh, receiving this week. It's just crazy. Like, you know, he had 20 receptions just two games ago, came down to earth last week. I think this is a, game, a get-back spot for him to get right back on track. And I think Eckler is going to do well. On the other side, I mean, the only person you can really look at as far as on the other side is DJ. I, I would like, I love Cole Komet. I just think uh, this matchup with uh, Derwin James in that backfield, who plays in the blocks but has no problem covering the tight end. We see him do it every, twice a year against Kelsey. Um, I think, you know, DJ Moore is just somebody, we, like I said uh, at the beginning of the show, 
Badger had no has no problem getting this guy these targets these games. Will it mean something in this matchup? It will against you know someone as generous as the Chargers. So just give me DJ Moore. I'm not really a fan of either running back. I mean Deontay. If I can take that back and say I would play Deontay if he's a flex option. Uh, he caught a lot of passes. That's one of the things we saw him. He had like three receptions last week, and he got it done on the ground. I think Deontay can have a really good uh, game. I think Roshan is just somebody for you know, betting purposes, his receptions. Uh, I think he have two receptions this week. Last up, we have the Raiders going up against the Lions. This is a 46 point over under in Las Vegas is getting eight and a half points. Um, go ahead and round this out, Ben. Uh, Raiders Lions. I think the Raiders are going to, well, the Lions are going to bounce back uh, from last week. I think they're, they're a little, you know, they're upset. Campbell had these guys focused and ready. Um, Gibbs, man, let's, ride, let's keep riding Gibbs until Montgomery comes back. Um, I think he'll be the guy um, for Detroit. Um, also, of course, St. Brown, the usual suspects. Right. Uh, as far as the Raiders side, is Jimmy G playing? Like, who's the quarterback this week? Well, they haven't really given an update as far as Jimmy G's back injury is concerned. And we also don't know if they go back to Hoyer or, or if they let the rookie stay in because Hoyer got benched last week. So, I mean, it, it could be Aiden O'Connell again or it's I probably it going to be O'Connell or Hoyer, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I think it will be Aiden if it's out of those two guys. I think Aiden came in after the benching and threw a touchdown. Um, yeah. He just got more of a lava arm than Hoyer. Hoyer's just going to try to manage the game or whatever. So... But I don't like Josh Jacobs um this game. Um I think Tempe expectations on that against this Detroit defense. I think they're gonna come to play um this game. Absolutely. So it's gonna be a revenge game just in general from the L that they took last week. That's right. how I feel Detroit's gonna show up. So right. that pretty much wraps it up for us for this week. We'll be right back to you on next week. Make sure that you catch us on the YouTube channel again. That's at Fantasy Football Fiend, F-E-I-N. We'll see you next week. For today, we out.